the top six mistakes real estate investors in the Midwest make. Now, they might make them in other locations, but I invest and help people invest in the Midwest. So I'm going to break that down based on my experience, what I see new real estate investors, especially, and sometimes out of state investors and even veteran real estate investors make over and over again. That's costing them thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. So if you want to save money, watch this video. Hey guys, my name is Jay Lehman. I'm a licensed realtor here with eXp Realty in Champaign, Illinois, right in the heart of central Illinois. And I help people buy and sell personal uh, residences, but also help them invest in properties on campus, off campus, the University of Illinois, and also apartment buildings on campus, off campus. I'm here to help you invest in real estate. And if I'm going to help you, you got to pay attention to not making the six biggest mistakes. It's true. There are a lot of mistakes to be made in real estate. State, but I want to break it down for you right now and show you how to avoid them. So let's get down to the list here. Mistake number one, you try to hit a home run on your first property. You know, that unicorn you're looking for, that diamond in the rough, you know, the one that you're going to fix up and it's in a just perfect location, but everybody else overlooked it and nobody else knows about it and you know it. And guess what? You're going to be looking for three, four, five years before you find that property and you're never actually going to get on base and you're going to keep waiting to hit that home run. And the reality is, is that you could have got on base like the Oakland A's and Moneyball much sooner than if you would have just focused on getting on base. You know, maybe you'll hit a single, maybe you'll hit a double, or maybe you get hit by a pitch or actually walk to get on base. You know, that's the big thing I would say is just get on base. Mistake number two is tied to mistake number one, because a lot of times in mistake number two, those people that are trying to hit a home run are looking for a fixer upper. So number two is people look for a fixer upper for their first property. And I can tell you this right now, that is a big mistake. Just ask me how I know. You want to know? My first flip I ever did, I thought I found this great home run deal that was a fixer upper. And long story short, I didn't know how to bid how much it was to fix it up. I didn't know how to do the ARV, the after repair value of the property. What's it actually going to be worth when it's fixed up based on comparable sales? What is a contractor actually going to do? Who are they going to hire for subcontractors? What's the paperwork that I need? How do I make sure the contractor is actually a good dude? I'll save you the horror story, but I lost $40,000 doing that. So trust me when I say that people, me, can lose tens of thousands of dollars when it comes to real estate investing when you try to, one, hit a home run, and number two, try to buy a fixer-upper first. I believe fixer-uppers are a great way to build value and get some cash in real estate. But the reality is, is you really shouldn't start with a fixer-upper. I've just seen too many first-time investors and even out-of-state investors lose their shirt and more when it comes to fixer-uppers. Number three, you have more mojo than you have money. When you talk a big game, you want to buy nice properties in nice areas, but you don't have the money to do that. And you're unwilling to start with a more regular property that's turnkey to get you on base. You're trying to go for something way too big, not necessarily a home run, but more a fancier property that's an asset that is probably less on the cash flow side and more on the pretty side, meaning it's newly built. And really, you're not at that level yet. So you have more mojo in yourself than you have money. So you gotta put your pride aside and buy a property that is in a working class neighborhood that cash flows that is more turnkey. You don't have to do much at all. Maybe you have to do some painting, maybe replace a little flooring here and there, but it's not a wholesale fixer upper. You're simply adding a little bit of value. It's turnkey and it can be managed. Hey, one more thing. Would you like and subscribe to this video right now? Would you put a comment right now saying what you like best about the video? It really helps me. Thanks a lot. Now back to the video. Mistake number four, all about the wedding and nothing about the marriage. What do I mean by that? People are so focused on getting their property and finding the deal that when they get it, they forget that most of the property and the operations of the property comes down to the management of the property. That's like being completely focused on the engagement and leading up to the wedding and the wedding ceremony when you purchase the property or when you marry your bride and not being focused at all on actually working on your marriage to make it a fruitful marriage. The same is true with a property. So many people buy a property and think it's magically going to spit out dollar bills. Guys, it doesn't. And even it told you real estate is a passive income was lying. 
because it's not passive unless you have a manager to manage the property. And even then you have to manage the manager some. So I would say is this, is you need to be more focused on the marriage or what I would say the management of the property than the actual purchase of the property. That will ensure that your property will actually perform as you thought it would because it's being managed correctly. It has a great tenant that's being taken care of, that's being serviced. And when you do that, you will be able to actually cash flow your real estate and your property will go up in value most likely over time. Mistake number five is that you bought the property at too high a price. Listen, you can do a lot of things to church up a property. You can put lipstick on a pig, but if you bought it wrong, it's really hard to sell it for a profit. Now, real estate's a very forgiving asset. Over 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you can make your money back. But if you bought too high in the first two or three years, it's going to be very hard to make any of your money back or a profit unless you're banking on appreciation. And I would never bank on appreciation because a Appreciation is about hope, but if you buy right, it's about math. And so what I would do is I would make sure that you don't buy too high. You buy a property for what it's worth. You don't necessarily have to get a steal of a deal. Buy it for what it's worth. Get in the game and learn real estate. Mistake number six, and this is the final mistake, and it's a big one, so listen up. Real estate investors, especially when they're first getting started, will use a realtor that's a friend or an acquaintance or a family member. They do not own any real estate investment properties themselves. And I can just tell you 90 to 95% of all realtors don't own investment property. You have to find a realtor that not only invests in properties himself or herself, but also specializes in helping clients find their first or 50th investment property in the asset class, you know, single family storage units or multifamily or mobile home parks or whatever it is that you want to invest in that's actually helped other people do it and has done it themselves. And that's what I have specialized here in Champaign, Illinois. I help buyers, investors, sellers as well that are investors, buy and sell investment property. In fact, two thirds of all my clients in 2023 were investors. So if you're looking for a property to buy as an investment here in Champaign-Urbana at the University of Illinois or in Champaign County or out east in Vermilion County or west of us in Piatt County or in Decatur, Illinois and Macon County, I can help you with all of that. I've bought and sold properties in all of those counties. I know exactly what properties are worth and I can help prevent those six mistakes mistakes that we talked about. And if you can prevent those six mistakes, especially not going after the home run, buying something more turn, buying at the right price, keeping your mojo in check, right? Doing it for the marriage, not just the wedding, meaning not just the sale or the closing of the property, but the actual management. And you get a specialist like me to help you. We can supercharge your real estate goals. And so I'm here to help you. If you like this, would you like subscribe below? Would you leave a comment and tell me which mistake you've made or which mistake was your favorite in all of this video? Hey, it really helps me. So I appreciate it. And thank you for watching the end of this video. I look forward to speaking with you.